Thank you so much for watching online. My name is Mele and I serve on the Arise Worship Team. If you want more information about our services, visit us online at www.arise.church. We hope this message speaks to you today. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Share with you the immortal words that came from the monkey to Simba in Disney's The Lion King. When he told Simba, he said, you are more than you have become. And I've always loved that line because I think that sums up so many of our lives that we are more than we have become. That there's so much more potential in us. There's so much more greatness in us that God has put in us. And Ephesians 3.20 says, Now all glory to God, who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more. Everybody say more. More than we might ask or think. And imagine for a few seconds, imagine what God can do through your life. Imagine what your dream is. Imagine what your passion might be today. And, and just think about, just, just think as big as you can of what God could do in your life. And I will tell you this, that no matter what you thought of, God still has more. As big as you just thought today, God has more. There is greatness inside of you. You are more than you have become. If I were to find a picture that I think would sum up a lot of our lives, it's this picture right here. And it's this picture, you see a stone, and in the middle of that stone, there's a diamond. We're so used to seeing diamonds cut, shined, looking beautiful, but this is how every diamond starts off. It starts off in a rock. It starts off in the dirt. It starts off in the mud. It's not anything amazing when you first see it. And what we do in our life is we, if this represents us, we so often focus on the rock. We focus on the stone. We focus on the outside. And I say that God can see. God can see deeper. God can see the diamond in the rough. And that's from Aladdin. So we're just quoting all the Disney movies today. But God can see the diamond in the rough. He, he can see the greatness in you that even when we want to focus on the outside, we want to focus on the rough, God says, I know there's something greater. There's something greater in there that no one can see. And when I think about Joseph and Mary on this Christmas weekend, uh, God saw greatness in them. You know, on the outside, they may not have looked as probably the most... Uh, exciting or the most qualified couple, but that's the couple that God chose. And a couple of weeks ago, a professor at a university, he tweeted something. I don't know if you heard about this tweet. It was on the news. Um, this is what he said. This is the tweet. The virgin birth story is about an all-knowing, all-powerful deity impregnating a human teen. There is no definition of consent that would include that scenario, happy Holidays. How many know this guy probably doesn't go to church? Just a wild guess. But I, I remember reading that tweet that, that he had said. And basically what he was saying was that God uh, basically imposed his will on Mary. And I remember thinking about that. I'm sitting at my desk and, and I honestly thought, if only it was that easy. If only it was that easy. I don't know all of you here today, but I would assume that most of you would be like me and simply saying, I want to please God, right? With our lives, we want, we, we want to please God with our lives. I would think most people here today would, would say that. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand because then not everybody raised their hand, but even those who don't raise your hand, you still want to please God. You just don't want to please me by raising your hand, and that's cool. But, but, but we, we, we all would like to please God. And I would love with my life if I could simply say, all right, God, take over, do whatever you want with me. I want to please you. Let your will, all of your plans, just make it happen in my life. I'm waiting. I would love to be able to do that and go on cruise control and let God do everything for me. But unfortunately, God has never dictated our lives in that way. If he did, we wouldn't be humans. We would simply be robots. He doesn't dictate. He didn't dictate to Mary. He doesn't dictate 
to you, what he does is he simply speaks into our lives from a perspective of faith that wants to stir the right gifts in us. He speaks from the perspective of being able to call things that aren't as though they were. He speaks from that perspective of being able to see the diamond in the rough, of seeing greatness in you. On the outside, think about this, on the outside, to everyone that knew Joseph and Mary, the most unqualified couple. You look at them on paper. If you had to choose a couple to bring in the Savior of the world, I would say we would have never chose Mary and Joseph. Why? Well, first things, they weren't even married, and she was going to become pregnant. Do you realize the repercussions in that day? Uh, you know, nowadays, people get pregnant all the time outside of, outside of marriage. No big deal. Back then, you could be put to death. It was a serious thing. They were poor. They didn't have any status. They weren't anyone in society. And God says, you know what? That's the couple I'm going to use. I'm sure he could have found a nice, married, middle-class couple, which is probably what we would have looked for that owned the nice house and probably had a nice donkey and all that other nice kind of things in life. And that's who we would have loved to bring the Savior of the world in. And God said, you know, I'm going to choose some of the most unqualified-looking people and here's the reason why he saw something great in them. He saw something greater in them than perhaps even you and I could see. And maybe people look at you today and all they see is the rough in your life. They see your mistakes. They see your, your screw-ups and your mess-ups and all the things you've done. And I want to encourage you today, get a, don't, don't live your life in the presence of those kind of people. Get around people that can see the greatness in you. Get around people that can begin to sharpen you and chip away the rough part to begin to reveal the treasure that's inside. And that's why we beat the drum here in Arise Church that you need to get into a small group. You need to get connected. You need to get around iron that will begin to sharpen iron. You need to get around people that can encourage you when you want to give up to get around people that will bring greatness from inside of you. You see, today, if there's just one thought I want you to leave with this morning on this Christmas weekend, it's simply this. It's your yes that will unlock God's best. Your yes will unlock God's best. In the book of Luke, chapter 1, when the angel of the Lord appeared to Mary, look at what happened. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord will give him the throne of his ancestor, David, and he shall reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. And Mary asked the angel, but how can this happen? I'm a virgin. And the angel replied, the Holy Spirit will. Everybody say will with me. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will. Everybody say will again. Overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. What's more, your relative Elizabeth has. Everybody say has. She has conceived a son who was John the Baptist and is now in her sixth month. For the word of God will never fail. Now you might be wondering, why, why did you make a big deal about will and have and, uh, and all those words? Um, it's just simply because, number one, the angel didn't say it happened. The angel didn't say it happened, all right? The professor tweeted that, all right, God just dictated this on Mary's life. When the angel came to Mary, the angel didn't say it happened. He said, look, it will. He was using the word will in the sense to express futurity. It was, it was uh, future. This is what's going to happen. He didn't say you have conceived. He's saying you will conceive. And the incorrect thinking again that we have is that God just dictates our life and tells us what's going to happen and what we need to do. And it's not right. We incorrectly think that God can do in our life whatever he wants. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. How many know you have a will? You, you, have a, you have a choice in the matter. If that was the case, nobody would go to hell. But guess what? We have a choice. 
The Bible tells us in the book of Deuteronomy, we, we have life and death is set in front of us, choose life. I mean, no, that's pretty bad when you have to tell people to choose life. But there's still people that will choose to choose death, and that's your choice. We often incorrectly assume that the Word of God is the most powerful thing in our life. And I'm telling you, it isn't. Now, before you stone me for blasphemy, let, let me tell you why. In Mark 7, 13, Jesus said, making the Word of God... Of, what is that? No effect through your what? Tradition. Can I tell you what's more powerful than the word of God in our life is our tradition. Our tradition, our beliefs, the things that we have passed down, the things that we hold dear to our heart, our tradition, those things can actually trump God's word in our life. That even though the word of God says we're more than a conqueror, can I tell you, if you go around just saying, I'm a loser, I'm not going to amount to anything, my life is just pointless, it's worthless, can I tell you that your words are going to begin to set your direction in life? It doesn't matter what the Bible says, our traditions, our beliefs that we hold dear can make that of no effect. And that's why we have to constantly be reaffirming what we believe in our life. I was thinking about it, a mirror. I borrowed this mirror from my daughter and um, just looking at this mirror. This is probably, um, a mirror is what we look at our reflection at probably the most. Every morning, most of you look in the mirror, right? Some of you more than others. Some of you stare at yourself in the mirror. And uh, you, you ever saw people that love mirrors? You walk in a room with mirrors, they always look at the mirror. We have a mirror in our office. I always notice people that look at themselves in the mirror. You go to the gym, you have men that stand in the mirror and they, they look at themselves and they twitch one side and the other side, right? And they, they look at that. We, we love mirrors. And mirrors gives us a reflection of who we are, and, and we see ourselves in that mirror. There's a second mirror we have in our life today, and it's this. I mean, this is a mirror, and this is a mirror we look at a lot, and, and we look at this mirror, and in this mirror, we can see a reflection of ourselves that at times maybe is not even really true, but it's a reflection that we want to create. We put the best pictures on. We talked about that last week. And, and we paint ourselves in that. And we compare who we are in that reflection towards other people's lives. And, and we're looking in that mirror. But there's a more, uh, a, a more important mirror that we need in our life. And let me tell you, that mirror is this mirror. It's the Word of God. This needs to be the mirror in our life. It, it needs to be this reflection that we look at and we hold this up to us and, and we look at this reflection and we begin to see who we really are through Christ Jesus. It's when we look at this reflection that even though life may be tough and we want to give up, we look in this mirror and we look at ourselves and we begin to read who we are and we begin to find out that all things work together for the good of those who love Christ Jesus. We look at this and we begin to realize that in this mirror, in this reflection of who we are, the Lord will fight for us. When you look at this mirror and you feel tired and you feel like throwing in the towel, you begin to realize who I really am is that when I am weak, then I am strong. Through Jesus Christ, that when I come close to him, he'll come close to me. That when I trust in the Lord, that he will renew my strength. It's this reflection that we need to be looking at, friends. This mirror of our life. And that's why I can't encourage you enough to read God's word. You might be hearing you say, well, I've never had an angel come and tell me what God wants to do in my life. We don't need an angel to come. We have the word of God. You realize the Bible is full of promises for your life today? It's full of promises of what God wants to do in you and through you. When you begin to read that, it begins to reaffirm and begins to build new traditions in your life so that you begin to believe and your belief is aligned with God's word. Every time God's plan is revealed to us, we will always have 
the opportunity to respond. We're going to always have that opportunity. You can say no, but I'm telling you, your yes will unlock God's best. Luke 138, after the angel came and said, these are the things that will happen. Look what Mary said. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. Or as the King James Version would say, be it unto me according to your word. See, the second thought is simply this. Mary responded to what the angel said. Mary said yes. She said yes. God's plan was laid out, and she said yes. You know, at times I ponder different things. I think about weird things at times, and one of the things that I've thought about a couple of times, and I'm not making a doctrine up by this, it's just a thought. It's just a possibility. But I wonder, was Mary God's first choice? Was, was she the first one they talked to? I'm not saying she wasn't. But it's possible. Isn't it possible that maybe the angel went to another young virgin and said, this is what God wants to do and you're going to get pregnant, and she began thinking about the repercussions. My family's going to disown me. My fiancé will leave me. I might be put to death. I don't think I could deal with this. And she said, uh-uh, uh-uh. Don't be it unto me according to your word. Go to somebody else. Get out of here. I don't want to do this. Possible. I wonder here in Hilo, you know, we've been pastoring. It's been 10 years now. I've often thought, was I, was I the first choice? Was there possibly somebody else before me that had a calling? Somebody else that God wanted to plant a church here and, and, and to do something here in Hilo? Was there somebody else? But instead of saying yes, they said no, and they turned from that. And it's not that I'm more qualified, it's just that I said yes. I, I wonder today how many people have said no to what God has called them to do. And guess what? It's their right to say no. Contrary to what that professor tweeted, God never dictates in our life. We have the opportunity to respond. We can say no or we can say yes, but remember, it's your yes that will unlock God's best. When we're posed with that, we have three different ways to respond. And the best way I could illustrate this was from an experience we had a couple of years ago. We were in Auckland, New Zealand, and they have the Auckland, that Bay Bridge that goes over the bridge. It's about 300, 300 feet to the water. And while we were there, we actually had our oldest son, Zane, with us. It was his 16th birthday, and a lovely couple there, a couple, a Kiwi couple that we love that were driving us. They said, we want to bless your son. We, we, want to, we want to pay for him to go bungee jumping off of the bridge. Now, I don't know how you guys are wired. I am not a bungee jumper. I don't like heights, right? I've had people, you know, say, oh, I've always wanted to go skydiving. I'd say, why? I would never want to go skydiving. If a plane was crashing, like we were going down, remember like Indiana Jones style? When they're going down, I could totally jump out of the plane with a parachute. Like I'd be the first one. I have no problem. But if that plane is flying fine, I'm good. This makes no sense to do those kind of things. I, I don't want to bungee. I, I, but my son, he's different. He, he wants to go skydiving. He wants to go bungee jumping. So they offered they want to say, we, we want to bless him. We want to, we want, we're going to pay for him. And they said, and we'll pay for you guys to go and you can watch, you know. And so we went and we had to, we're not even jumping and we had to put harness on, right? You had to put helmets on. I'm getting nervous already. We have like the, you know, that safety line, the one you got to hook onto the wire. So when you're walking, then you got to stop, unhook, unhook again. So I'm, I'm getting nervous. Like how dangerous is it just walking? to this thing. So we're like under the bridge and we're on that walkway and, and we're just walking and we're walking up on the column going to the center of the bridge and they made this big metal pod that is like a pill shaped pod that's attached to the bottom of the bridge and that's what people bungee jump off of and we get into the pod 
And even though you're in the pod, it's still scary. Like when big trucks, you'd hear them drive over the bridge. The whole thing would just shake, you know. So I'm like, oh, man, this is, this is crazy. And I'm thinking we have three different ways to respond. The first is my response. No way. No way. We've probably all at certain points in our life, God's called us to do something. Uh-uh. I ain't going to do it. I don't care how good you tell me it is. I don't care if you're going to pay for it. I am not jumping off of the bridge. There's, there is no way. That's the first response. There's a second response. The second response would be illustrated. As we were in that pod, there were a brother and sister. They, they were Indian, like from the nation of India, kind of Indian, and they were there. And the sister, you could tell she was a go-getter. She went first. She, she jumped off. She did the bungee jump. Then it was her brother's turn. You know, these, they're, they're probably in their late 20s, 30s. And the brother got to the edge, and he couldn't pull the trigger. And he would stay there. And she, she was, like, trying to, like, yelling at him, not, like, mad, but encouraging. Right? She, Come on, you can do it. You can do it. Come on, you can just jump. You just got to jump. You can do it. Come on, come on, come on, come on. And she just kept going and going. And, and he would be standing there, and the guys behind him, and he'd be like, and then he just couldn't do it, right? So we're all kind of like holding our breath, like, is he going to do it? And, and then I can't really make fun of him because I wouldn't even be standing there. But it's funny anyway, but I'm not there. And, and, and he has more guts than me to even stand at the edge looking down 300 feet. And he kept going. And it's like minutes, maybe like, I don't know, five minutes. And she's like, come on, come on. And then we get to the point where everybody that's watching, we all start going, jump, 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 jump. I know it's easy for me to say. And at times, God calls people to do things. You know, it's easy to cheer those people. Oh, yeah, you should totally do that. Do it. You can do it. You can do it. I don't want to do it, but you can do it. I'm behind. I'm way behind you, but I'm behind you. You can do it. Cheered on. And there's that hesitation. And after all the time, finally, he jumped. And he did it. Right? And everybody's like, ah! Cheering. And then there's a third reaction. And that's the reaction Zane had. I think the same kind of reaction Mary had. And I want to show you what Zane did. Take a look at the screen. He had to take his pictures. In fact, I think the guy was like, he didn't even finish three, and Zane jumped. He was all in. And I think about Mary, when the angel of the Lord told Mary what, he, what he's going to do. She didn't hesitate. She didn't ask questions. Well, what about this? What about that? What, is, what about Joseph? What, what about my fiancé? What if he doesn't want to marry? Come on, guys. If Joseph, you, I mean, if you had a girlfriend and she said, hey, honey, I just want to let you know, I know we've never had sex yet, but I'm pregnant, but don't worry, it's from God. You'd be like, oh, yeah, that's okay. Come. She didn't ask any of those things. You know what she said? She jumped. She said, yes. Everything you said, let it come true in my life. Mary was all in. Mary was 100%. You see, it was her yes that unlocked God's best in her life. The Bible is full of promises. We can see all the things that God wants to do in our life. And the third thing is you need to respond. You need to respond to God's plan for your life. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know the plans I have for you. I'm believe, I believe this with all of my heart. Every person here, God has a plan for your life. He has plans for your life. Maybe you just see the rough. Maybe other people around you see the rough. But God sees the treasure that's inside of you. He sees the diamond in the rough. 
I grew up in church. I've been practically in church my entire life. My dad started pastoring in 1987. And something would happen every time we had guest speakers, and I was just a kid, we'd have guests that would come in, and they would oftentimes, you know, they say, hey, you know, I just really feel God is saying, you know, you're going to be called to ministry, you're going to pastor, you, it may be this, you may be do, do that. And, and I would smile as a kid, but can I tell you on the inside, it was, uh-uh, I ain't going to do that. I am not going to become a pastor. There's no way that I'm going to pastor a church. And, you know, for years, it was always a no. On the inside, it was a no. You know, I could smile and look pleasant on the outside, but inside, I had a will of iron. No, I am not going to do it. And if I would have kept that attitude, do you realize that I, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing today? Even if it was God's plan for my life, if my attitude was always a no, I wouldn't be here. But I got from the no, from standing behind the safety bar in the pod, I finally got to that second stage where I was kind of like that brother standing on the edge. And then I was at that place, well, you know, maybe, and I just kind of be like, uh, 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 and I wasn't able to do it. But I got to that point until finally I got to that place where I just said, all right, God, I'm all in. I'm jumping, yes, whatever you want to do in my life, Lord, be it unto me according to your word, whatever it is, whatever it is, I'm ready to respond. And I began to move in that direction, and I took the leap of faith. And that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. Why would I share that story with you? It's not just my life God has plans for. He has plans for you. And what are, what are some of the things that maybe today in your life, you've just been standing on the edge, but you haven't been able to take that leap. You haven't been able to take the jump. You haven't been able to take the next step today. And I want to encourage you, your yes, it's your yes that will unlock God's best. I'm not saying that your yes makes life easy. I'm not saying that your yes makes it all work out together. But all I'm saying is that your yes is going to unlock the best. When you look at the life of Mary and Joseph, it was not without challenges and trials running for their life. They had to do that, but it was still God's best for them. And today for you, what, what is it in your life that you need to just simply take that leap of faith? That leap of faith to be all in. Just like Mary, just like Mary and Zane. I told Zane and the other said, do you ever think that we'd be using Mary and Zane in the same sentence? But Zane, you're in the sentence with the Holy Mother. Be all in. I'm all in. God, yes. I want to unlock, I want to unlock the best. There is a treasure buried in every single one of you. In every one of your imperfect lives, my life included, there's a treasure buried inside of that. In the dirt, in the rocks, in the mud of life, there is a treasure. God sees it, and he's calling you to greater things today. Won't you close your eyes with me this morning? And just take a few moments and, and just think about your life. What, what is it? What, what is it that you're being called to? What's that next step? As we enter into the new year, what is maybe God calling you? What is he calling you into? I believe for some of you, it's, it's just taking that, that leap of serving. Serving here in the church, getting into next steps class, discovering your potential, using your gift to touch the life of someone else. Maybe for others, it's taking a big leap and asking someone for forgiveness repairing broken relationships for others it's a big leap and it's just coming clean about some of the secrets that you've been hiding in your life that it's just been tormenting you and just getting to the right person and just sharing your heart and taking that leap and taking those first steps of healing it could be any number of things today i want to challenge you don't be held back don't be frozen on that platform take the leap say yes and begin to unlock god's best in every single one of you lord i pray today lord that we'll have the courage to take that step lord that we'll have the courage to say yes even though it's not always going to be easy but to say yes to your plan in our life to say yes 
Lord, for you breaking the chains, healing our hearts, setting us free. Lord, us saying yes to stepping into our destiny, into the plan and the future that you have for every single one of us today.